Anocheció el día 22 de octubre de 1844 y Jesús no volvió como esperaban los adventistas. Pero la mañana siguiente llegó y con ella, tristeza, decepción y para algunos, humillación. And when he met a neighbor, they'd say, What are you doing here? I thought you were going up. And it sounds kind of funny, but it wouldn't feel funny, I don't think. Why does God work out of disappointment? Could it be that disappointment is a filter, a grid, through which we pass, and in the passing through, there is, there is something that, that gets purified. There's something that, that, that becomes resilient. There's something that shines. There is this phoenix out of the ashes. Now, out of that disappointment, our hearts are caught up with, with greater, with greater embrace and expectancy over what turns out to be God's methodical, patient unfolding of His divine will. Al ver que Jesús no regresó, un granjero llamado Iram Edson y sus amigos que se habían reunido en su casa aquel 22 de octubre lloraron desconsoladamente. A la mañana siguiente decidieron ir al granero en búsqueda de auxilio divino y aunque dudaban, fueron consolados y decidieron salir a consolar otros adventistas. En medio del camino, Irán tuvo una idea de lo que pudo haber sucedido. En cierto modo, fue aquí donde la iglesia adventista del séptimo día nació, cuando un granjero contempló a Cristo. I think the thing that we could say about Hiram Edson is he's someone who wanted to follow the Lord. He wanted to follow what God wanted him to do. He wanted the truth. And of course, after the disappointment, he has that experience of going through the cornfield. Some people call it a vision. I think that's pushing it. And this is how our sanctuary doctrine develops, the idea that Jesus is, didn't come back to earth in 1844, but he began a special end-time work in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. Essa doutrina é importante por uma razão muito simples e que o cristianismo perdeu de vista. A salvação, biblicamente, é sempre, sempre deriva do santuário. Outra verdade ya comprendida por algunos mileritas antes del gran chasco, pasó a ser asimilada y compartida después de aquel 22 de octubre. After the disappointment, out of the confusion of that disappointment, emerged Sabbatarian Adventism. We say Sabbatarian Adventism because they hadn't taken any name. That's just our name for them. They just called them ad themselves Advent believers who kept the Sabbath. La historia de los adventistas del séptimo día pasa por Washington, New Hampshire, y algunos dicen que fue aquí donde comenzó, con un grupo que aceptó la fe de la segunda venida de Cristo uniéndose al movimiento milerista, y después de escuchar el testimonio de la maestra Rachel Oaks, aceptaron la verdad del sábado. La pequeña iglesia que recibió a James y Elena White, John Andrews y Joseph Bates sigue abriendo sus puertas los sábados, siendo la iglesia adventista con más tiempo en funcionamiento en el mundo entero. But that church started just as a community church. It was a Christian church, not Adventist, not even Sabbath keeping. It was just a Christian, Sunday keeping Christian church. But then it became a Millerite congregation before the disappointment. And of course, the stories that I'm sure you've already looked at of uh, Frederick Wheeler and Rachel Oaks, who comes there and her daughter's teaching school and she wants to be with her. She's a Seventh-day Baptist, and she introduces the Sabbath to Wheeler. And the others, at first they aren't interested, you know, but God helps Wheeler. Wheeler accepts it. And he becomes a very important early Sabbath keeper. La verdad sobre el sábado fue publicada en un folleto que llegó a manos de un hombre llamado Joseph Bates. El Capitán Bates era un viajero de los mares y ciertamente una fuente de noticias para un pueblo que vivía del comercio y la caza de ballenas. Un día, mientras cruzaba el puente que se encontraba en este mismo lugar, compartió la noticia que cambiaría no solamente su vida. Al encontrarse con su amigo James Madison Monroe Hall, que venía en su dirección, él le preguntó, Capitán Bates, ¿cuáles son las buenas nuevas? Él respondió, amigo, las buenas nuevas son que el séptimo día es el día del Señor. Y fue así como por primera vez el Capitán Bates compartió la verdad sobre el sábado. Fairhaven is the home place of Joseph Bates. And of course, the three founders of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, Joseph Bates, James White, Ellen White, each played a role. Ellen White had a prophetic voice. We've talked about that. James White was the organizer, publisher, the mover and shaker 
of the movement. Joseph Bates in the early years was the theological founder. He's the one who was bringing together the theological framework in a very unique way. It's the Sabbath that, that comes finally through him, of course to him and then through him in the movement. And then the sanctuary linking to the Sabbath is Joseph Bates again, this idea of, of the importance of proclaiming the Sabbath in the last days. These are theological core concepts that come from Joseph Bates. Entre los que enfrentaron el gran chasco, una joven recibió una misión especial. Every major epoch of, of sacred history has had a prophet who's saying, hey guys, something's about to happen. Now, look, would it be logical for a God who's done it here, 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 before the greatest event in the history of the human race, in other words, the return of Christ, visible, personal return of Christ to earth, would it be logical for God to say, you know what, yeah, I had him down here, but I don't need a friend now. You just figure it out. You people just figure it out. You'll get it. Can you imagine God doing that? Are you kidding? He's done it here, he's done it here, he's done it here. And so I believe that at the end of time, like John the Baptist, God says, I'm going to have a friend. And in fact, he found a 17-year-old girl, a 17-year-old American girl. And he says, hey, listen, I'm coming back. Would you be willing to tell the story? Was Ellen White the basis of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? Uh, it's not fair to say that. I teach development of SDA theology and teach these classes here at the seminary and have for a number of years. Uh, Ellen White is one of the founders of the church. That's fair to say. Her and James White and Joseph Bates. But they would never think or say that it's founded on her or even on her visions. Because a study of the movement shows that it was God leading them in their study of scripture. So the movement was really message driven from the Bible. And Ellen White saw her prophetic ministry as two things. And this is really important if people want to understand Ellen White and her role. She was there to take us to, to Jesus. Her emphasis upon Jesus and upon salvation is so powerful and second is to take us to Scripture. So her writings take us to Scripture. They are not her writings, they're Scripture that she's pushing us to read and to look at. So it's not built on her, it's built on a biblical message. I am absolutely convinced that the ministry of Ellen White, as a woman, as a woman, is a ministry of a friend of God who brings to a generation who has ears for God the word, don't quit now.